I think we're about 30 seconds away, so I think we can go ahead and start. Um, welcome everyone uh, to our last uh, set of uh, breakout sessions. Uh, it's just these two days have gone by so fast. Um, so I want to welcome everyone um, to supporting dissertators uh, emotional needs. Uh, presented by uh, Emily and Heidi, and if you would both like to introduce yourselves and, you know, do your magical facilitation of this workshop, that would be great. <laughs> Thanks, Terry. Thanks, mm -hmm. Terry. So, my name is Emily Wickner. I'm the Associate Director for Student Experience at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. Um, and a large part of my job is overseeing the thesis office and helping students through um, the writing of their thesis. And Heidi? My name is Heidi rbc Calm. I'm an Assistant Dean of Academic Affairs at the University of Iowa, and I see so many colleagues on um, the people and participants um, list, so thank you very much for coming. Um, I uh, uh, work with Dr. Erin Kaufman, who is our thesis manager, and together she and I have uh, really worked to innovate and evolve um, how we provide thesis and dissertation support on our campus, and so I'm excited about our partnership with uh, Emily, but also grateful for all of you from whom I've learned so much. Great. And so uh, this presentation really starts, it stems from a conversation Heidi and I had I think two years ago, and that we've kept having um, as time goes on, and we've shared lots of information and resources with each other. And we want to extend this conversation, though, to include you all, um, so that we can all share with each other and and really learn from each other and support each other. Um, the the big questions that you know we're thinking about are what you know what what is happening for our students at this time you know as the title suggests this is a very lonely process for students sometimes writing the dissertation they are working on it for months or years and you know it feels very isolating they feel like they don't have the connections that they used to and they especially at the end they have so much on their plates from looking for jobs to you know finding out where they're gonna move to what the next steps are a lot of our students have families too and so they're trying to balance you know work and life um, and so this is a very vulnerable time for our students this is a very stressful time for our students and so we've really been thinking about what else can we do do in our positions. You know, we work with students on the formatting, on the finishing touches of everything, but what can we do to help them in the time leading up to that? Um, what role can we play in supporting our students through this, these so important milestones? Um, and so that's really where our conversation um, starts. Yeah, I'm going to add just two things, um, Emily. I mean, I clearly remember, um, you know, those of those among us who feel like kindred spirits, and I know a lot of us do, um, you know, I clearly remember meeting those folks um, with whom I had an aha moment. And when I saw Emily present at her first US ETDA conference and she put that big I up on uh, the screen, I don't know if anybody else remembers it, but I was like, okay, I wanna know you because I can see that you're trying to inspire yourself, inspire students, build morale, keep the momentum, you know, churning, right? And so I just want to echo what she said and underscore that what we hope to talk about with you today is two things, right? How do you celebrate your students at the end? But also then, I happen to be a moderator during um, Lily's session um, just a moment ago from Iowa State. How do you also reach your students earlier and try to support them along the way? So it's celebration at the end and supporting them along the way. And so with that, maybe Emily, you want to start our PowerPoint? Yeah, do we want to do the um, Minty first? Oh, sure. The word cloud? Let's yeah. do it. Okay, so do you mind sharing the link in the chat? I don't mind at all, and I will absolutely okay. do that. 
I'm trying to share my screen and it's not letting me. Yes. We just practiced this and it's not working. Do you have yours that you can try? I'll try it, yeah. Um, my, yep, what's, uh, do you want to put the code in the yeah, yeah. chat while I do that? Oh, guess what? I think I'm going to be able to pull up our slides for sure. Good. But I guess I handed the magic powers over to you. I guess you must have, although it's not. Um, so what mine's going to do, everyone, is I think in order to get to Menti, which I have pulled up, it's going to, um, you're going to see like almost, you're going to see a bunch of gobbledygook for a minute, but let's see if we can um, make this work. So first, it's kind of a nothing screen, and then hopefully it will let me get back to the Menti. Let's see. Yeah, this time it's just letting me do the PowerPoints. Unless, actually, this is called join a presentation. It had that before. Do you have it now? Got it. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Got it. All right. So our first question for everyone is, what do you think it is like to write and submit a thesis or dissertation at your campus? Look at how stressful it is right in the center. Confusing. This is really great. Yeah. The lack of writing support. I don't see lonely there. I see, I see supported. I was just going to say, I don't see a single positive word uh, disorienting, right? That says a lot. Mm -hmm. Hoop jumping. Does anyone want to comment um, in the chat or um, just unmute yourself um, with what you're seeing? in this word cloud? Larry says all too negative. Thank you so much for all your comments. It was kind of choppy. Um, I, I saw that in the comments, and I experienced that as well. If you want 
to either um, try again or just put some of your thoughts in the chat. Um, you said a lot that is really important. I would love to, to hear it. What can we do to make it easier? Um, a comment from Deborah. Do we need to be ma making people jump through all these hoops? These are exactly the kinds of reflections that um, we're, we were hoping to elicit. Larry says, we have a lot of work to do if this is typical. I think that's exactly right. Erica says, I'm a PhD student. Even though I'm completely familiar with the process, it's still incredibly stressful. And I think it's important to separate the writing from the submission and formatting for Deborah. I agree with you. That's a really good point. It could be like, what's it like to write on your campus? What's it like to submit? Um, that's, a, that's a really helpful observation. That's awesome. Ashley, I'm sure we like to say at Iowa that we've tried to take the crisis out of the submission process, right? We can't necessarily take the stress out of writing a dissertation, but can we, to Larry's point, to I think um, Deborah's point, can we take some of that crisis out of um, the submission? Thank you, Terry. That's such a good observation as well. Yeah, there it's it's interesting i was reflecting on this and in in the thesis submission and deposit process there are so many deadlines that we have and they're all occurring very rapidly and so there's a lot for students to to be juggling and to managing and, and each deadline does create a different amount of stress for different reasons i think um and so thinking about you know how can we change our messaging to help them through those steps so that it's not like a ah, crisis this deadline is coming but like oh I've, I've got this i've already done it and i think another piece is thinking about students at the very start of the thesis process right they they finish their preliminary exam and then they're supposed to go <laughs> write a thesis and it's like i don't know what to do how long is it supposed to be like what what am i going to talk about you know and and so um they're experiencing emotions in a very different way and then you've got the the students in the middle who are you know run, have a slump or you know mind block and so what can we do to be available to students at all different times in all different stages i think we have another question here that we want to to pose um, if I can get to it. All right. And what have students told you about this process? What have students told you that this process is like? So in order to um, add to this, you may have to advance it. Here come the words, excellent. Yay, and easy, right out of the gate. And I think, um, again, back to the earlier point, you know, we didn't, um, when, this, when we wrote this question, what have students told you this process is like? Are we referring to the writing of the dissertation or the submission? And I wonder, you know, part of this session for me is what role can we play in both, right? Obviously. Um, that was part of what Iowa State recently shared, and I've seen in the chat here since um, a number of you have written that you've or you've shared that you've started similar writing support programs um, at your institution. Obviously, sort of moving how we can help um, students, you know, forward, right, or back, whichever way you want to think about it, but earlier in the process for them. I'm seeing a lot more positive things on this one. Um, mm -hmm. Exciting. Um, or is that not as bad as expected, easier than expected? Submission is easy and help. I like that the word help is, you know, right here. Step by step, I think that's really helpful as well. A lot of steps, but if 
we provide transparency with those steps, we're being helpful. So this is great, and thank you all so much for, for participating in our word clouds. And I'll definitely take screenshots of these, and I can share them if anyone's interested. Um, I think Heidi and I, we have a couple of PowerPoint slides that we want to show you of things that we have done. Um, we are still, you know, experimenting, trial and error, trying to figure out what's going to work, what's not going to work, what are our students going to respond to, what's what are they not going to respond to? And so we want to share some of our um, things that we've done and then some takeaways that we have from these experiences. Um, one of the things that I've started doing is um, creating messages of support that I can share with my students. So we have a newsletter that goes out weekly. It's called Grad Links, and it includes lots of information like um, upcoming workshops, opportunities for graduate students, um, that sort of toolkit for them and we I have my own section it's called thesis tips and every week I give them a tip and sometimes it's like letting them know that we have formatting resources or that we have a workshop coming up but I also integrate things such as like taking care of yourself dedicating time away from your thesis um, and making that part of your routine um, using campus wellness resources you know going to the the counseling center if needed the the health center or even campus recreation um, a few years ago I um, had an interview with different colleagues here at the Graduate College and asked them what they wish they had known when they were writing their thesis or dissertation. And I wrote a blog. Um, and you see, it's gotten 2,000 views. So um, that's on our website that, that students can access. And they're still looking at it these days. Um, the other piece is actually. Um, so these are things that I've put together. This was a surprise to me. This came through on Twitter a few years ago. Um, part of at ARC University, the thesis office oversees the doctoral examination process. And so we um, appoint all the preliminary and final exam committees. And in our emails that go out to the students to let them know that their committees have been appointed, we have information about you know how work, preparing for exams can be stressful and here are campus resources that can help you. Um, and one of our students um, saw that and took a screenshot of it and shared it with everyone on Twitter. So that was a really um, fantastic moment, you know, to, to see that that was read and that it was appreciated by our students. Another thing that we have done is we have shared with our students and um, we've shared congratulations with our students. Um, these are the eyes that Heidi was talking about. Um, we've gotten very creative lately and we've made gifts of our eyes and so um, they're animated and we post them on Facebook and I'll put a link in the chat. It was actually surprisingly easy to do just with Adobe Illustrator and Excel and so you know, it, it can be done. It's it's not it's not hard. Um, then you know, working from home, I had my cat Ruby with me, and so Ruby became the um, assistant thesis coordinator for our university. And so taking pictures of her with the eye got a lot of likes and and support. Um, we have one student that has commented that that you know these posts have keep kept them motivated, that they like this content and that they um, it inspires them. Um, I also took a couple screenshots here of lines that I've just incorporated into emails that I send to students. So it's like if they've asked me a question about, you know, is my deposit complete, then, you know, I'll say, yeah, and congratulations on, you know, completing this important degree requirement. Best of luck in the future. 
Um, to Heidi's point, um, building community. These are um, some of the things that we've tried um, and actually had my first dissertation and thesis meetup last week. I created a Zoom room and it was geared for students who are especially at the start of their the at the thesis process. And I had about 15 students come and we just talked about what was on their mind. Um, and it, and it was very weird because it was like a very, very successful thing because by the end they had formed their own, you know, productivity group amongst each other. And it was like, OK, this is this is good. <laughs> so um, that was a really successful thing. And then this playlist actually is an idea I stole from my little sister who used to work at IUPUI. And she created a playlist for her students, you know, on their favorite song. And this is something we have in the works for finals week. You know, what music do you like to study to? And so we're hoping to create you know, poll our students, create a playlist and share it with them around, you know, finals and, and thesis deposit time. So Heidi, on to you. Yeah, I mean, can you see why I'm so excited to be close to Emily because of all the creative ideas, right, that she comes up with. So um, my, you know, what, we're, what I'm going to share about uh, what we've done at the University of Iowa is a little bit different, but conceptually, we've been on the community and celebration train for a long time. Um, we started thinking, wow, this is an important moment. We want to capture this and celebrate it with the students. When they were doing, um, a, there was a form, right? I'm sure you all have them too, that they needed to submit to us in hard copy. And so we were going to take a picture of them uh, when they submitted that form. And we did it for one semester, but we ran out of the bandwidth keep doing it, right? And so that is one of the challenges um, that we have faced at Iowa is just capacity. Um, we want to celebrate, we want to build community with students as they are dissertating because we know it's lonely and it's hard, it's arduous, but we, we lack the capacity to do so. So what have we done instead? Well, we've made some policy updates that we think um, support student well-being. As I said before, we've really tried to remove the crisis from the process. We don't want this to be a crisis. It shouldn't be hard. They should be able to write a manuscript, defend it to their committee, and then submit it to us fairly smoothly and easily. And again, Dr. Aaron Kaufman, our thesis manager, has really achieved um, that. So in 2014, we underwent a major revision of our formatting requirements. We had formatting requirements that literally were from the typewriter era. Now we have simplified things and we allow students to um, use the conventions of their discipline. Um, Aaron may wish to post in the chat. You can, of course, go out to our, our website as well and see what we require. But the focus of our work is really on the students, not the manuscript. That's not to say that the manuscript isn't important, but I would ask ourselves in the chat, we've been talking about it already here, you know, what to what end, um, to what end does, does the formatting serve? Now we focus on professional improvement of the um, appearance of the manuscript. We want it to be readable. We want the publication details to be correct. But are we sort of um, making, you know, do we have requirements like we used to have where we wouldn't allow single space? It was actually like you had to, in Microsoft Word, you had to select, you know, that spacing option where it was a specific number. That was one of our formatting requirements. when I learn that, I was like, wow, I don't even know if I could have done this in Microsoft Word. Why can't we just use regular single space? But again, these were just things we had never really thought about on um, what purpose or to what end does formatting serve. We've created um, requirement tr transparency. Again, Erin has done this um, on our website. We want students to know it's easy, it's simple, we can help you, and support is available. What steps do they need to take? We used to have a two-deposit model. We eliminated that. I won't go into what it is. But again, it was just another sort of typewriter error, era, cumbersome, um, kind of bureaucratic part of the process, right? We've launched electronic sign off for dissertators. That's um, something we did, uh, that's for faculty actually, um, through ProQuest. Um, and now we have a remote policy, a remote defense policy exception. Um, and we just keep 
moving forward. I think the point here is that we try to support students' well-being by uh, reconsidering and re-examining uh, our process so that we take some of, um, you know, those challenge words and all that negativity and we remove it um, from kind of one of the last activities in their academic career. So I'll be real quick on the next slide. So the other thing I want to mention is we have really discovered how inequitable some of our, our um, formatting requirements or some of our requirements might be. Um, we did not necessarily require students to come see us in person via or before the pandemic, but it was the only option available to them. So they had to come to our office to meet with Dr. Kaufman for as long as it might take. Think about what that means for anybody who's a part-time student who's working, anybody who has children. We are a nine to five, eight to five business office who can't take off time during the day, who even has to come across campus because the work they're doing in their lab is either extremely demanding or their PI might require it. Now, Dr. Kaufman has tripled or quadrupled the number of support appointments Appointments that she is providing to students simply because she uses tools like Dropbox and Zoom. Because she's taken everything electronic, the equity that we believe we've been able to offer students and the access is, it's transformative. It's incredible and um, we won't go back actually. We won't go back to in-person appointments um, simply because um, we can serve our student population better by doing it. It, um, through Zoom and through uh, digital or virtual. That's it. And I think one of the things that, that Heidi and I were talking about as we prepared this is that, you know, you don't have to, you know, do e enormous things, you know, you don't have to go, I saw in the chat the talk of the bell, and that's a great idea. You don't have to go buy a bell and hang it on your campus and ring it, you know, you can just sending a line in an email that just lets the student know, I saw you, I, you know, I, I'm happy for you, I, you know, support you. I sometimes, during my format reviews, and when I send corrections to students, or when I don't send corrections, sometimes I, like, get lost in reading or looking at what they've done, and, and I'll sometimes drop them a note that says, oh, this is really interesting, I can't wait to learn more, and they appreciate that. They, they really like that, you know, I've taken the time to notice what they've done. They're not just, you know, a, a, a number, you know, of a, a thesis that I color on my eye. They are a student who has done something amazing, and I and I want to acknowledge that and, and, you know, share that with them. So you can do tiny, you know, small things can make a huge difference. Um, and I think, Heidi, you said that you started um, adding sort these sorts of lines to emails at, at one point, too, as well, right? So we would like yep. to um, engage um, you all in some more conversation. This chat is like, I can't even keep up with it. I love it. Thank you so much for sharing these ideas. And I hope we can get a transcript of this to share with everyone. Um, we have another fun tool that we would like to engage you all with. Um, and it is a Jamboard um, through Google. Um, Heidi, do you have that link? Yep, I, I will put it in the chat right now. And we'd really like to just engage more with some of these questions that we have um, and, and just share. This Jamboard is a really great way um, for us to collect ideas and again, share them um, later on. Now, if you haven't used Jamboard before, um, oops. What we'll do is right here on the left side of the screen, I don't think my clicker is gonna work um, so that you can see it. There's a little thing that's a sticky note. There's a little um, card, it's underneath um, the pointer. And you can type in an answer to that question and, and it'll appear on our Jamboard so that we can um, collect our thoughts. 
So our first question for you is, what are some of the unique needs that dissertation and thesis writers have? Oh, this, this one I like, validation that they are doing things right. That is a question that I think comes up a lot, especially in, in the perfectionism, right? We have students that, you know, focus on, you know, little details of their work and need this reassurance that this is what's going on and, and that they're doing things correctly, that they're doing the things that their PIs want them to be doing um, in the right way. And that's when they get wrapped up in their thoughts and wrapped up in the perfectionism. And so I, I constantly have to remind them, this is not the end. This is just the beginning. You know, you all these ideas that you have, they will be here tomorrow when you're done writing your thesis and depositing. This is what you need to do to get this paper done. You can revisit all of those ideas later on. And every time I have this conversation with a student, they just, they're like, yeah, that's right. And, and you can tell that, that some relief has been taken, taken off of them. This is such rich information. I mean, I am so grateful to be part of this conversation today. Thank you everyone. I'm just marveling too at, at how much expertise is in this community related to student support. You know, again, when you think about what are what is the work that we do, obviously the work is uh, the manuscript is part of it. There's formatting requirements, but look at everything that everyone has been doing to support students and to center our work on students. It's really incredible. We've got nine minutes left, I think. Um, so do we want to uh, uh, maybe do another one of these and then just maybe have some you know, final time for um, chat? Yeah, sure. Which um, question were you thinking? Um, we have a, a couple. Um, what about... Um, what if we start, we, we end with this one? Because um, I think that this one is great and it's the idea of, of going forward looking. So this is um, our last question and thinking about what we can do, you know, what we can, um, uh, oh, Heidi, I've been broken up for you. You've been bro broken up for me <laughs> the entire time. Um, so thinking ahead, you know, what partnerships can, you develop or can we develop to help new possibilities in this area? So this is um, the fourth board. Um, the, and so you can click to that through here. So what are some things that we can, some partnerships we can develop, whether that's locally for you on your campus, whether that's broader with um, people in this network or, you know, others. I think one of the things to, to keep in mind is that we don't have to do this alone. You know, we can find others to help support us, whether it's, you know, providing, um, providing um, like pamphlets for our students or doing workshops for our students. Um, we've got some great ideas on here. Campus connections, furthering campus connections. More departmental support. Yep, partnerships with the library. That's one takeaway that I've had from this um, this conference is there are so many partnerships that 
have been um, developed between graduate colleges and libraries, and I think that those are really important. We both work so closely together and so i think it's great to have those close connections um not just in the transfer of documents but in you know to connect with them personally and get to know them personally so that you can work together to um to help And I think um, the really big sticky note in the bottom center, um, of, you know, is there more that, you know, through this community, USCTDA, that we can do to stay connected across the year? And I think that that's something I'm definitely interested in and keeping these conversations open throughout the year, not just at the conference that, you know, this wonderful conference that we're meeting at, but, you know, we, we are still going to be working with students throughout the year. What else can we do to support each other um, and to support our students through this process? Oh, where do I um, use the use the I? So we, I have an I I printed out. Um, and I just, I use it, um, it's usually hanging on my door. So when students walk by, they can see the eye of the, we've been at home, so we haven't had that. Um, but we post it on Facebook, we post it on Twitter, Instagram. Um, sometimes we post progress updates. So sometimes we'll, um, when we're ramping up, the eye will be just a little bit full. And then by the end, we show the, the whole eye. Heidi, do you want to, to add anything? I, I don't know if Heidi can hear me. I'm really worried about my sound. So I'm sorry, I've been new, um, but I, I agree, actually, so there's a couple of um, comments in the chat, Larry and Terry, I, I just put, I wish we had a talk on monthly meetings, but what, we had a meeting um, monthly on student success, where, where um, you know, as Larry saying, something in addition to um, not just formatting, again, not, not sort of minimizing you know, the importance of formatting, but amplifying, right, and augmenting. Right, augmenting what else um, it is that we do and um, kind of the spheres of influence that we have to support um, student success. How would we go about organizing ourselves to do something like that? What do folks think in the chat? So Heidi was saying that she really likes the idea of, of creating another group like like Larry has mentioned. Um, and so how could we go about doing that? What would you all think about doing that? And um, would anyone be interested in participating? And, and what are next steps, you all think? Yeah, so I think, um, Heidi, since there's been interest, perhaps we can bring this to the, the board at our next meeting and discuss if this is something that, you know, we want to support and, and create. Um, and perhaps we can use the listservs and everything to, to let everybody know and, and collect names and, and interest for the group.
So I think we're getting close on time. Um, does anybody have any questions or comments, final comments that they want to share? I don't know if I'm still garbled. I wonder, Emily, could you try speaking? Yeah, I am. Um, I can Maybe speak. Yeah, I thought maybe the screen share would fix it. But, um, yeah, exactly. I'm sorry about that. I don't think there's anything I can do. But I just want to say thank you, everyone, for all the ideas and the conversation today. And I look forward to thinking together about how we can um, kind of uh, reimagine our groups that we have and maybe repurpose them for uh, um, additional conversation and um, collaboration and idea exchanges. Yeah, I echo that. Thank you all so much for coming to our session and for giving such great feedback and, and doing our, our polls and jam boards. We really appreciate everything and for participating in the chat. So thank you all so much. Thank you for coming to our conference. I think it's the end of the day for us. Um, and so we really hope to connect with y'all in, in the coming year.